Welcome back to another episode of our Toyota Land Cruiser 80 series build. Previously, the 80 was unfortunately involved in an accident and needed a front end rebuild, which snowballed into us deciding to do a turbo barrel conversion while we had the whole thing apart. So far, we have stripped down the 80, removed everything from the Ford territory we are using, installed billet oil pump gears and heavy duty valve springs into the engine. Got the ZF Auto adapted to the cruiser transfer, mounted to the four liter barrel block and into the 80 series. Got a big turbo mounted with exhaust manifold, intake and injectors. Mounted all the new panels, radiator, intercooler, fabbed up the bar work, wired the Ford computer into the 80 and got the engine running for the first time. In today's episode, we keep smashing through the jobs and trying to get this cruiser on the road but it's an absolutely mammoth task. Then I'll throw this back at Demi, I'll say, you have the car, it's yours now. I'm done with it, I don't need you no more. And we'll go get it tuned, and then she'll be on the road. So the episode after that, probably be blown up. <laughs> yeah. Blown up or crashed. Proudly supported by Opus Campers, Ultimate Nine, Tread, Superior Engineering, GME, and in part by. Alrighty, another day. On the Turbo Barra 80 in the shed here, day four billion. Lots of things going on. A few things have gone on last week though, since uh, you guys saw the last episode. So I'll do a little update on some of the work that's been done. We'll start over this side. Battery, battery box all properly mounted. Air box properly mounted. Todd made up some nice little brackets to go on this. And then coming off the air box, we have a Raceworks power steering reservoir. Nice and fresh, nice sleek design, and it's close to the power steering pump, so we'll be able to plumb the lines in fairly easy without bloody spaghetti everywhere. Coming over here to the radiator, bottom radiator hose is all done, so we ended up making that out of stainless piping. We tried a few different soft hose options, but none of them would work. So the stainless looks very nice down there. Todd's done a beautiful job of welding that together. And what that also means is it's just like two little straight connections off either end of it. So all I have to do is carry a straight bit of silicon hose in the car that's the same diameter. And then that's covered for top and bottom radiator hoses because that's all it is each time. Todd has also got the thermo fan, radiator fan, whatever you want to call it, mounted on here as well. So we're just going with the one from the Ford Territory. Number one, I didn't have to buy another one, so it saved me some money. Number two, the Ford Territory is a beautiful big fan has high flow high cfm i believe it's called that uh, yeah will do a very good job of cooling all this down it was better than anything we could find online and then it's just a factory ford part get one of them for many wreckers and then with this fan i'll get Berto to explain because Berto was saying he's, he's done a bloody good job of it how's he done it i wouldn't have been able to do it mate let me tell you that <laughs> yeah. so he's got some stainless sheet He's then bolted that to the factory radiator and then he has trimmed that so that he can then mount the factory um, mounts. So on these they normally clip in and whatever. He's put a through bolt with rib nuts into that steel, into that stainless plate and then he's ever so gently trimmed this so it's a perfect flush fit and he's pinch welded it all, added foam so it's all sealed, it all worked very well. He's a top bloke. Mate, I, I don't know how his brain works. He's got some skills. He's got more skills than me, mate. <laughs> He's got more years than me. He's like 60 or something. <laughs> so that'll be easy to take off if we're stuck in the in the bush somewhere. Not yeah. like we will be, but if we're stuck in coals or something. <laughs> boom. And then like, it's still got the factory Ford plug, so we've probably even got that plug on the loom somewhere. We'll plug it in, and I'm pretty sure they're com computer controlled, so yes, it'll come so. on and off with speed and all sorts of stuff. How good's that? Thanks, Todd. Best thing you've ever done, Todd. <laughs> yeah. But today, today I'll be able to get some work done because he's not here to talk me ear off. Yeah, that's right. That's right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Trent's cooler is mounted up. There was zero room at the front of the car here, which meant we went with putting it underneath the car. I think in front, is it in front or behind the surge tank? It's behind the surge tank and it's tucked up between the chassis and the rock slider and body, so it's pretty safe. Yeah, so it's pretty safe, secure up there. It'll have the air smacking it from underneath the car, like a little bit of an angle on it. And it's also got a fan on it too, so it'll have the fan blasting it and when you're sitting in traffic idling, the fan will keep it cool. And then that'll keep our transmission cool and happily running heat 
and the autos do not go well together. So that's another important little job ticked off. And then we come over this side of the engine, but I can run through a couple of things that have gone over here. So we're starting with, we've got a dipstick in. We've got a dipstick in. Um, Todd's had to cut the bracket off and then remake it to suit where it bolts. It's very clean, looks factory. Uh, we have a check valve for the brakes so that we won't lose vacuum when we're driving after we get, get on, the, on the gas and whatever. And um, then I've just made the fuel line from the rail or the rail up to the uh, fuel reg. So I've got one, one fuel line made one step closer. Yeah, sweet. And that's uh, one of the things we're starting at the moment, fuel system. Yeah, yeah, fuel system. Um, I'm gonna try and see how many lines I can make and then figure out what I need exactly to make the next section. The 80 fuel system is a little bit complicated in the fact that you have two main tanks, which both run up to your block. It's not like a patrol where you've got a sub that dumps into the main, there's just the one tank running up. So because of that, when we're dealing with like uh, a surge tank and more performance system, it makes it a bit more complicated to plumb up. What we're going to do to start with is we're just gonna plumb the one big, bigger tank up. Yeah, bigger then, tank to the surge tank. And then from the surge tank up to your fuel regulator. Yep, and then from the return from, I think we need a return for the surge and for the rail, back to the tank. And then what we're gonna do with the second tank is we're just gonna change that from like a main tank up here to a sub tank where you just hit a button in the car and it'll transfer that fuel over to the main tank. Yeah. Rather than, that seems like, to us in this build, that seems like the more simple way to do it rather than dealing with like a billion different like 400 lines. 400 different fittings and check yeah. valves and <laughs> yeah. the factory Toyota solenoid, which probably will stop working one day. So if we just make it simple, yeah. we can at least get it running iron out whatever bugs we have, because you know, new build, there's gonna be bugs. And yeah. then once it's done, we'll go to stage two and we'll make all the nice small things, air con, second fuel thing, all that yeah. sort of stuff work. So anyways, that's a little update of what's going on. We'll keep smashing into these uh, jobs we got going on today. Fuel system. Bloody oath, you bloody beauty. I'm making an oil line actually, is what I'm doing now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that feed done, and then that whole oil feed, water feed, it's all done, done. Yes, yeah, so just knock out that it's little oil line. Off, so. And then we can go into the fuel system after that. Yeah, so we got AN4, a little line for oil. And then we got one, two, three, four, five fittings. You wanna know why we've got so many fittings? You think it's one line, it's gonna have two fittings and some hose. Not this one, 44 micron filter. So these Fords have a thing where they run all the way over, and then the, the oil gets hot, in the line and this filters any junk that goes through. If you have any bearing material and whatever that goes through your oil line into your turbo, it blows your turbo up. Yeah, so okay. we've got a little filter. So that's why we've got more fittings. Beautiful. Sort of have to make two lines to make the one line. So we've got the oil feed line sitting there, it comes from under there up around here and it's got to feed into the turbo up over there. But because you're going from one side of the block to the other, it's a bit of a long run. We've got to try and make it look neat and nice, not just have it hanging around everywhere. So what Berto's doing is he's pulled these two bolts out of the timing cover, and he's got some little brackets from Raceworks. And then we're going to clip that line there and there as it comes up around, make it look nice and neat. It's going to be like a bought one. Well, it is a bought one. It's just custom. You now people say, F hell, this Berto bloke doesn't know custom. Well, would well, you look at that? <laughs> Brother, ugh. There's that oil feed line all done. It's looking beautiful up there, mate, just like factory. Mate, who, whose idea was them, them bloody things? Yeah, you, you got it sorted. Well, what's, what's next on the list? So we got that fuel line started over there this morning, so fuel regulator down to the fuel rail. Yeah. Or start plumbing a line back towards the surge tank. Rightio, so I've got the fuel hanger out. We're on the fuel system, trying to get it organised down the tank end. So we've got the main tank out. It's got a pump. This is your fuel light. This is your fuel level. So I've got to follow this up. This goes to this banjo bolt. So we need to get that converted to an AN fitting so I can run a hard line straight from here all the way to the surge tank. And then I'm having a look at the rest of them. It's also got two returns. One's up the top high, one's down the bottom low. I assume one will just be maybe, I don't know, I don't know what it'll be. I'll have to have a look in the system. Normally they only have one return. Yeah, it's weird it has two returns. Yeah, so whether it's something to do with the, the dual tank system or a tank vent, we'll see if we get one of these 
a uh, AN fitting welded on so then it returns in. If we didn't have the surge tank, you could have just used all the pre-existing lines, or they might I not have I didn't have been... the surge tank, I could have just ran it from the fuel line up at the rail, and then everything would have worked. Yeah, but because we've got this surge tank, we need to just run new lines from yeah. the tanks to the surge but we, tank. And we would have had to change these pump. pumps as well. These would have had to have been bigger pumps, so we would have had to retrofit a bigger fuel pump in here. This is just low pressure, it fills the surge, and then the surge has high pressure, so. There's many different ways you can go about this fuel system, how you want to do it. Yeah. We've just well, we've chosen what I think will be best or easiest. I can probably return a surge to one of these and a rail to the other. Yeah, okay. So, there's a few, few ways. It's sort of given us a few options. Next job, what's on? Next job, transmission cooler. So, we've got Todd mounted it up under the car. You've already seen that. So, now we need to go from out of the transmission. So, Raceworks sell a special one specifically for the ZF, which two of these bolt in. They, they push in with O-rings and then they have a plate that holds them in. And then we can go f make some line from one of these, from that, straight over to the cooler, and this on both ends, and then it's done. Yeah, so it's just a feed in, feed out of the cooler. Feed in, feed out. Over to the transmission, help keep it cool. Yeah. When you're limited bashing, mate, should be cool. Yeah, mate, that's right. <laughs> well, let's get this done, eh? Next little job we're getting ticked off on the 80. Diff breathers, transmission breathers all the breathers. We got this nice manifold from Superior Engineering which has little filters and all the lines go into them. So we run them up on the car, put them into here, done. So yeah, so just run them down, we go each diff and the gearbox and the tra transfer, transfer case. case. Yeah, run yeah. a line down to each one into the breather port. Yeah. And then they will sit uh, up high in the engine bay over there. Yeah. So if you're going through mud, water, etc. Then, then they're breathing up high and they're not getting blocked. Yeah, unless you're doing submarine stuff, you'll be fine. What's this you got here, mate? People have been saying for a while, get Birdo a creeper. Where'd this creeper come from? <laughs> now you got one. Where'd it come from? Well, that don't matter. Yeah, I don't know, but I've got one. <laughs> Thanks for whoever left it here. <laughs> yeah, we just found it at the shed. So you know what we said? Now it's mine now. So I'm going to use it. Ready? Ready for this? I need to cut my arm off. So the superior kit just comes with a big long length of the hose and then you just cut it uh, as you need it, as you do each one. So that'll be both diffs done and then come to the middle here and plug into your gearbox and transmission up to where it's been mounted there in the engine bay and then that'll be it, job done. Breathers are done. We've got our Raceworks delivery. We've got all the bits back from my mate Dan at the hydraulic shop. We've got all these uh, AN fittings welded onto the end and stuff. We've got our steering ones. So we've converted them from factory into the steering box to AN, so now we can run everything Raceworks. These were both returns. Yeah. This one is the bigger one, so I've made that the return. Then they have a banjo for the feed out of the pump. So I have got a Raceworks banjo, which they come in AN6 to suit our size banjo bolt. And then we're converting that to dash eight to run all our fuel on. Yeah, okay, so we've just got to now plummet from there up to the, that's gonna go from that hole to the surge tank, surge tank up to the engine. Yeah. And then it's gonna, we're gonna have a return line which Back through that? this one. What about this one? Is that being used for anything? I'm or just going to gonna... put the factory um, rubber hose back on it. We'll hook into a bit of fuel system stuff, mate. Yeah. Yeah, we will. We will indeed. I'm excited. We've got a fuel filter. We've got some fittings. One-way valve. Stop it from flowing back. The fuel hanger is in with the fuel pump. I've got a couple of fittings put up there. I'm coming down here now to see where I can run fuel on out from the tank because there's not much room between the body and the tank, so I'm trying to figure out what's the easiest, quickest, straightest route to where we need to go. Then we'll figure out some lengths, we'll get them cut, we'll get some hoses made. So, in the fuel system, I've got a Raceworks. This is a 10 micron, like a billet fuel filter. The tanks have their own little sock on the bottom of the pump, but I'm pretty sure these don't have a fuel filter because we've got rid of it. So, because we're going all AN lines, I've just got one that suits AN lines. So these are um, a stainless fuel filter 
So you can pull these out and wash them. They're reusable. They're the goods. Keep that fuel system nice and clean. Yeah. And where's that one going? Before or after the surge tank? It's going to be before the surge tank. So I'm going to have it so it catches everything before the, the new fuel pumps have a chance to eat yeah. it. Yeah. I'll probably uh, rib nut this in the chassis somewhere. So now I've got all the fuel lines made, the filter in place. I'm going to get, this is a power probe, so I can give straight power to stuff. I'm going to get the original fuel pump power so it fills the surge tank and then once that's full I'm going to go up to the surge tank and give one of the two fuel pumps power and see if I can get fuel pressure at the regulator and if there's any leaks we'll check for all leaks and whatever. So because none of that's wired up yet we're still we're still waiting for stage two of the wiring. Josh is a busy man. You ready for it? So I've got this earth, earth clipped on, earth to the earth wire, power probe so I can give it power. Find the fuel pump. Oh, you see the fuel coming out? Fuel's coming up, mate. We gotta. So now, I'm gonna pump this for a while, get the surge tank full. I'll be able to check if there's any leaks. So I'm just gonna run this for a minute. I'll turn a surge pump on and pump up to the rail. They're partying down here. No, a little Literally. disco on the camera. Literally. This main fuel line in, that's not actually where it's going to, to run. We just don't have the fitting yet for it. We're just going to send it up down along there and much neater than that. So you're going to film that um, fuel gauge yeah. and I'm going to turn a fuel pump on from the surge tank and it should build up fuel pressure up there. Or if there's any leaks, we'll find them. You ready? Yeah, I'm watching. Yeah, yeah, you got like 30. No leaks? No, no leaks up here. I'll do a quick Google, see what they want the fuel pressure set to. The tuner will probably do it as well, but if we get it like close to it, we'll be good to go. Yeah, all right, so our yeah, fuel pressure's not quite high enough. We reckon we want up around 40. Yeah, yeah. I've spun it a few, so it might change already. Uh, what do we got? Yeah, 40, you're on 40. Bang on 40? Yeah, mate, you did it. Beautiful. You did it. Mate, look at that, eh? We'll pack up, we'll call it a day, bud. Mate, that's a big moment. We've it got a, a fuel system for her. It is a big moment. With the fuel system done, mate, well, the next system is power steering system. Yeah, mate. And you may be thinking, what's this in your hand? This is a power steering cooler. Where'd you get that one from? That's from the Ford Territory, mate. It was about this long. I trimmed him down, modified it. You but, wouldn't be able to tell. It looks beautiful, like it come from factory. But those custom modifications. Yeah. You might see some pink dots here. That's where I'm going to mount it. So that's why you chopped it down, so that it could fit in that nice little spot in there. Yeah. And that'll help keep our power steering fluid cool because you don't want it overheating. That's right. We'll ruin pumps and all sorts. Yeah. I'm going to rib nut, drill some holes, rib nut into there, mount that. And then we have to get two weld on ends fitted yeah. for ANs. And then we'll make all the lines and then we'll be done. And we'll have a power steering system done. Then I'll throw this back at Demi and I'll say, you have the car, it's yours now. I'm done with it, I don't need you no more. <laughs> See you, nice knowing you. <laughs> That's what we'll tell her. What do you reckon about that, eh? Power steering cooler installed. We've got this back from the welders. We've got the AN fittings welded on. Now I'm going to remount it and then I'm going to continue to make some power steering lines for this thing. So I've just already made the high pressure one, which you'll see in a minute. And now I've got to make out of the steering box into this. This cools and then this back up to the res. Okay, our steering lines are done. We're just going to fill this resi up with fluid, see how much it's going to hold in there, and then uh, might crank it, pump some down, see if there's any leaks. It won't start, but we'll crank it. Okay, our steering fluid's in. We're just going to keep going with the fluids, mate. Yeah, mate, I'm just tick I've just got the fan shroud back in and the upper hose back on and clamped. So now I'm going to fill it up, see if there's any leaks, get it ready for the big go-go. You got some distilled, demineralized Mount Everest spring water to go Not in Not Mount this. Everest, this is going to be um, Antarctica Glacier. Yeah, perfect. That's what the barra's like. Mate, we got that much rain going on today. You just drive this thing out, sit it in the rain, it'll be filled up in three minutes. There's too many minerals in that water. Yeah. We need it demineralised. Because you know you know why they have demineralised? So like, you know how you get like calcium build up in that, on all your showers and that? Yeah. All your water has like, I don't know, what, whatever minerals are in there, it gets hot and then turns into that actual mineral. That's what all the scale and shit is that builds up. Thank you.
What's that, eh? Fresh demineralised water. Mate, you just went to the shops and picked that one up. Yeah, it comes in a coolant bottle. They fill it up for you. Yeah, beautiful. They got like a demineralised tap out there. Yeah, yeah, perfect. I hope there's no minerals in it. Mate, that water's expensive and you've already wasting half of it. Yeah, well, guess what? You pour it. See how good you do. <laughs> I'm hey, running we... out of the day min. I've got to go back to the shop and get some more. Yeah, right, yeah. I'll see you in half an hour. Did I tell you that um, the demineralized water self serve from the tap out there? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, you, you have, they like tap your phone when you do it. Yeah, yeah. Said, Put yeah. that on the bench, it's expensive. Yeah. Right, so we've got the inner cooler pipes back from painting. We had to get them painted because Todd welded them with um, just the MIG and then sanded them back so they're seamless. So we didn't want them to go rusty where they put the MIG wiring. We went with the same colour as the stripes and the rocker cover. Brown, don't know what it's going to look like, we'll soon find out. <laughs> yeah, we weren't too sure. Now, hopefully we can get the engine bay back together. Can we get a hoya? Hoya. What's the thoughts on the card, Demi? It's a microphone, speak to it. <laughs> I think the car is looking very nice. What did you, what did you say today? You seen some fuel lines? I some... saw uh, some unconnected items underneath the car. You know, if you came in and did some work, Demi, we'd, everything would be connected by now. I'm never invited to come here. I bring myself I here. I was wondering who invited you here right yeah. now. <laughs> I, I just come around when I feel like it. What do you reckon? What do you reckon about it? That's pretty much everything back together in the engine bay. Intercooler piping in, battery, which means we have power in there, airbox, power steering, lots of stuff in there. And because we've got power, now we can start wiring a few things up. We're just trying to get these headlights wired up, and then we're gonna do the gauges, UHF. Mate, it's just coming together. It's all happening, it's exciting. That's probably a demi car, let's be real. So Sean's just setting up the bush doofs on the app. We have the bush doof king, mate. Mate, bush doof king. So you got an app and then you can yeah, play around. You can play around, colors. you can make it strobe, then you got all your modes. And obviously when you're on the road, you just have it on white. You yeah. definitely do not have it on matte or you will be pulled over straight away. <laughs> yeah. Look at this, Sean's even repping the merch today. Mate. Good bloke. Mate, he came you prepared. Said, you said what's, professional, mate. What's on down there? What's on down there, mate? Ah, RDO. Oh, yeah, mate. Hey, where can people right. get them? TylerThompson.com. Another day. We're still waiting for bar work. So. <laughs> not here yet. This, it's not here yet. It's still coming. This morning I came in, wired up UHF and some gauges. So. Boom. Ooh, they look nice. Look at that. Look at that. Pink for Demi, right? And You're going to be happy with at that. At night, Dom. Boom, purple, mate. Beautiful. Boom. So, have you done that? It's yeah. got no oil pressure. It's Bugger. Gonna, it's going to blow. Your HF's wired up, tucked away nice and neat. And then what's, what's that in your hand? We're about to start something this, else then. Yeah, so because I'm waiting for bar work and that, this rocked up today. We've been waiting for it. We're still waiting for some bits, but race works one litre catch can. Jewel in, one out. So, we have to re plumb this back to the airbox for engineering. Yes, yeah, sweet. And why do, why do we need a cash can? What's the purpose of it? Emissions. I think it's garbage, but emissions. <laughs> right, yeah. Any thoughts on where we're going to fit this thing? Not really, nah. Ideally, we want it over this side because that's where it's going to get plumbed to. So you think you just rip nut it into the side of the airbox? I don't really want to pull the airbox back out, but yeah. You know, like five minutes ago in this episode when we said... It's not coming back yet. Yeah. It's coming back. Coming here. back. <laughs> You get that? That's what Birdo does anyway, in and out. Yeah, right, young fella. Not too many, Tom. Wasting much energy. I'm efficient. <laughs> That's the catch can mount up there on the side of the airbox. Yes, we know it's not straight, but the boys said it'll still work sweet. It's got a baffle in it. 
and yeah, the oil can still just run down and drain out from the bottom there. So we just need all a couple parts off Raceworks. It's kind of like you need to get it fitted in and then work out what uh, fittings and hoses and that you need. So we'll need to run a fitting and hose from here down up to plumb it into the air box. We've got a hole down the bottom side of the air box over there. And then we've got to run hoses from these two between there and there. And then, mate, we finally, finally, after months. Months. Months, got Wait. a bloody tail shaft. Life, mate. Because this is an auto with the conversion kit, uh, you need manual drive shafts for it. Yeah. And they've been like an absolute pain in the ass to get. Manual full time. Yeah. Sean, after all these months, had one in his backyard, which he found yesterday. Which Ch chucked that in. Front one, now we had to get a back one off someone else. Yeah, now we've got the back one, so we can get that in, and now this thing can actually move and drive. Won't be none of that Bluetooth drive shaft stuff. This ain't a seam we build no more. No, nah, mate, this is real life. The day has finally come. The bar work for the 80 has arrived. We've got bull bar and we've got rear bar. In the end, we decided to go with the white color coded to match the car. We wanted to do something different other than black, which we have on all our vehicles. And I reckon that white's gonna come out the nicest and cleanest. Before we put it on though, we will put all the lights in it. So it's got four holes, two, two. So that's how this car's gonna have spotlights on it. They're gonna be mounted in the bull bar. That's the bull bar on, we'll get the rear bar on. Yeah, brother. Shit, eh? Shit. Big day, big moves. Shit. So that's the bar work all on. Front bar, rear bar. What do you reckon, mate? Look good or look bad? It looks good. You like it? Looks it? Good, mate. I, yeah. I'm, I'm medium at the moment. I'm not loving it, but I'm liking it. You're medium rare, but it's hard to get you to get excited about anything. <laughs> But we have an actual full car together, which is, that's exciting. That it is. looks like an actual car now. It's all yeah. pieced together. Finally, it'll nearly be done. Yeah, so that's all for this episode, because this episode has already taken us about four weeks to film. Yeah. It's so slow. It's slow going. And we're going away now for a couple of weeks, otherwise we're never going to get an episode out. Next one should be the final episode of this build, though, I reckon. Next episode's going to be, what, exhaust? Wire side has got to wire up some final things, and we'll go get it tuned, yeah. and then she'll be on the road. So the episode after that, probably be blown up. <laughs> yeah. Blown up or crashed. So that'd be stage two of it. Yeah. The rebuild, rebuild. All right, but stoked of how it's coming together, mate. Big yeah. job, big yeah. job. Big job, mate. The year's all is going to be ready by Christmas. Where are we now? We're after Easter. After Easter. We're like the 15th, 16th, 16th to the 4th. April, yeah, look, it's been a long time. It's nearly an extra half a year, mate. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Yeah. I'm on. I'm on. Yeah, she's getting there. She's getting there, mate. Not too far off. You reckon this episode will have it driving? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> you can add it whichever one of them you want to use. I gave you options. What's your thoughts on this fuel line over here? You like that setup? I do like that. Well, you shouldn't, because that's not how it's going to be. It's I don't like it that much. So. It's kind of weird how it just sits up like that. She's <laughs> like how she doesn't know what to say, whether it's good or bad. <laughs> Get us some bolts, bro. Get us some bolts. Stop. Get us some f***ing bolts, bro. Where are they? On a toolbox. Come on. How long does it take you to get a socket in this tent? Smash it. You're sweating, are you? Put the other one on so I don't have to hold it. Use the f***ing thing.